The only match England have won in 90 minutes so far in the tournament. Doby hoping to win a few matches in this tournament today to underline his presence at the Winter Gardens. I mean, looking at his record last year, you, you would fancy him to maybe emulate what he did 12 months ago, maybe go at least one better as well. Well, considering what a lot of people have been doing over the last two or three weeks, World Cups, European Tour events, players' championships in Germany. There might be some tired dart players out there here today and tomorrow. Dolby's not going to be one of them. He's going to be fresh as a daisy. Yeah, and, well, I'll just uh, touch upon what I was going to say in a moment. Tops here for Doby to uh, level things Yikes up. Shot. Nicely done. One apiece. Chris Doby on the scoreboard. I wonder if anybody can get close to that over the next couple of days. 100. Well, I wouldn't be surprised. Hempel on throw, in position to take a 3-2 lead in this one. Doby, though, applying some pressure with that visit of 130 to leave himself 72. 56 here, though, for Hempel to get in front back again. Dart on the floor for the time being, has to just reassess and very nicely done a 116 check out for Florian Hempel who once again gets his nose in front in this very tight contest and as you say I think against different opposition might well have been much better off than he is 83. it could still be Flo who gets to the finish first here but he needs another treble to get there he just will not leave Dolby alone well, he is down to a finish first. Doby looking at 181 after nine darts. Just the single 20. Might have to shift here. Yes, yeah, goes down to the 19s. That uh, first single 20 was slightly awkward. 96. Shots on. 51 ball. This would sting. Oh, Yikes. my word. He's been gutsy up to that point, but that is a little twist of brilliance. And now he's got a two-leg cushion in a game where he's been outscored. Yeah. 78, so 18s. Trouble to leave double 12. That leaves 60, so we'll just tidy this one up now. Hempel had a look at the 147 in the previous leg. Didn't materialise on that occasion. It might materialise on this occasion. It might well materialise on this occasion for Florian Hempel. 111. Just outside the wire on double 18. I don't know if you caught Chris's face in the background there, but he thought he was hitting that. But the game could be back on. Oh, he's wondering how that's missed. I think everybody in the world is wondering how that missed. 20. Yeah. Well, that could be that for Chris Doby. Hempel, having already missed one match start at double 18, is now looking at three more opportunities. He's just inside on double nine. Hempel normally likes double 18, and that 32. has curtailed his uh, opportunities. He's actually left himself a shot at double two if he returns. Game shot. But he doesn't. Stephen Bunting, he's gone through. As is Martin Schiller and Gary Anderson, but two seeds have gone. We'll touch on that in the next match. But Hempel has got something left in the tank, obviously. Great use of the 19s here from Doby. And he's absolutely filled it up to get himself down to 94 as well. That's a brilliant piece of approach play by Hollywood. And it sets up the Hollywood finish as well. And Florian Hempel, well, all he can do is apply some pressure. And you heard the reaction there from the German. Chris Doby looking at 94. Went for two doubles to finish the job. He's had a match-winning chance. Hempel had his a few legs ago, and he gets another one. And he Thank finds his way into Florian round Hempel. two somehow. That was like a soap opera, that game. £34,000, thanks to a run to a final and a semi-final. I, I certainly had him in the frame for a bit of success this weekend. Uh, sorry, this uh, midweek programme. Now, 170 for Evans. Gets the first art in the treble 20, not the second. But certainly in position for another break of throw, unless Belmont can find this 1 4 2. Switzerland's best player looking to steal a leg from Ricky Evans, but it's not going to be. 80 scored to leave 62. 90. Try to find that trouble 10 to leave double 16, but it might all be in vain anyway. Yeah, this is for a double break. He's backing himself on one dart at Game tops, shot. and a brilliant plan it was. I like the way you put that, Rob. Because if you're 4-0 up, if you show any sort of sympathy for your opponent, 60. I'll tell you what happens. 
exactly the same as what happened in the previous match when Hempel was 5-2 up and all of a sudden it's 5-5. Put your foot down, don't have any sympathy and get the job done quicker because otherwise this opponent might bite you. 160's on for Belmont. He's looking at tops. Game shot. That's a little bit of a cheerer upper, isn't it? Your first leg of the day is a huge checkout. Pressure back on the shoulders of Belmont once again, looking at 2-1-8. Evans on a finish on 1-4-1. Considering how many big finishes we've seen in the first couple 16. of matches on this board, why not finish the game with a 1-4-1? We've had a 1-6-1 and a 1-60. And we came pretty close to getting that one. So if the 158 doesn't go from the Swiss, it could well be him being flattened in round one. Well, Ricky Evans started his last Pro Tour event with a 100 average in beating James Wade. He's nowhere no, near that average today, but it's still likely to be an all-important opening win for rapid Ricky Evans looking at double 16. That's awkward. He's going to have to readjust here. What's he going to do? He steps right over to the other side of the hockey, just having to watch his footwork Get there. And that is Ricky absolutely Evans. beautiful from Ricky Evans. A 6-1 victory, and he finishes things off with a really eye-catching finish on double 60. And uh, another troubleless visit for Richie Edhouse. Just opening the door slightly here for Bates to 60. step in. But again, he's not really punished him as much as he would have liked there. But he is down to a finish on throw first. 1-1-2 one, one, plays 2-2-4. Two, two, well, OK, he's down to a finish, but it's the biggest of the lot. 92. Treble 20 would have left double 16. 60. Well, this would be a showstopper. Oh, Game Richie shot. Edhouse with the big fish, a 170 checkout to get back on terms at one apiece. Just to give some context, though, to Bates' record this year, I mentioned the, the fact that he's only won two matches on the uh, Pro Tour this year. Some of the players he's been beaten by, you, you could perhaps excuse him as well. Danny Noppert, Michael Van Gerwen, Ryan Searle. On two occasions, Ricardo Petrescu as well, Andrew Gilding, former UK Open champion. Nine. And they are the sorts of opportunities that Bates is going to have to take if he's going to make life difficult. 96 here for Richie. That's not going to happen either. So Bates has been given a bit of a reprieve in this all important third leg as he looks to break back straight away. Game shot. Gets there at the third time of asking. Double 16. Ed House looking at 161 to further his belief. And uh, yeah, the rice smile is there because those sorts of darts have been missing him so far. 97. He's not been able to produce the big numbers. And when it seems a lost cause, he's, finding, he's found the treble 20. 110, so 50 for Bates for the match. Tops he wants, just one dart in his hand. 90. And that is missed match dart number two. Further opportunity for salvation here. 48 for Ed House is the target. That's the single 16. Can he find the double? No, he 48. can't. Well, Owen Bates has already missed two match darts, one at double 16 and one at double 20. He's got three clear opportunities now. At double 10, Owen and Bates. Owen Bates with only his third win on the Pro Tour on the Players' Championship season. One hundred and forty. Yeah, well, that first dart on the treble 20 was just begging to be followed up, and he did eventually with the third dart in hand, and he's got himself into a situation now where he should... 97 win this leg certainly should get a dart at the double and he'll get two darts at double eight now, that's shot. nicely done that's a 14 darts for gabriel clemens and once again Payne is struggling to keep up here 
Well, yeah, you heard him say there, his own assessment, the very word he used was dreadful. 140 is the chasm. 99. And Clemens will return looking at double 14. Payne is nowhere near, can't land a glove on Clemens at the moment. 59. And it's another troubleless visit for Josh Payne as well. The outstretched arms also tells its own story. He looks a little bit Dead lost shot. for answers out there right now. He's changed the flights all to no avail. And it's the same outcome. Clemens makes it 4-0. One hundred eighty. Well, a 140 backed up by the 180. And who knows, maybe all of a sudden Josh Payne with a score at 1-5, starting to play with a bit of freedom now, maybe just loosening up on the shoulder a little bit, just giving himself something to work with as Clemens responds anyway in kind with a 180 of his own. Payne looking at 97. So treble 18 for double 12. Can't find his way through on 57. that route either. And Clemens looking at 108 for the match. 89 gets it, double 16. Just 92. inside the wire, match dark comes and goes for Gabriel Clemens. Josh Payne to keep himself alive. A little piece of salvation. Double ten. One dart in hand. Twenty. And it's not enough. So Gabriel Clemens already one missed dart at double sixteen for the match. He's got three clear opportunities now at double eight. Payne has put his. Well, I thought he was going to put his darts away, but he'll be putting them away now because Josh Payne has been seen off there. Never really got going in that one, in all honesty. But Gabriel Clemens doing what he had to do. Yeah, Anderson didn't like that one bit, and it's easier to see why. He's OK. I mean, he's down to a finish first, but you'd expect that. It's on the Anderson throw, but he, he, he sets himself still very high standards, even at the age of... 40. Well, he's 54 later this year, isn't he? But um, still clearly sets himself high standards. Might well reach those high standards here with a 1-6-1 checkout. Gary yeah, Anderson sure. with a moment of magic to get back in front at 3-2. Too much at the moment, although he is looking... Potentially. 130. Well, he'll be looking at it now because O'Connor's left himself 167. Anderson looking at the big fish, which we have already seen today from Richie Edhouse earlier on. But Anderson can't 60. find the 170. And now O'Connor for a very, very important steal and a first break of throw. But it ain't going to happen. 95. Well, I mentioned earlier Anderson eight wins out of eight against Willie O'Connor looking to make it nine out of nine. He's got the treble 20, he's got the single 10, and Dead he's got shot. tops as well. Brilliant finishing once again from Gary Anderson. Another ton plus checkout, the 161 backed up by the 110. A cushion of 118 points, plus whatever he can add on here, and it might well be something significant. It's another 180 for Willie O'Connor. This is brilliant stuff. One hundred. Well. Six starts at least here for Willie O'Connor. It could just be two that's required. There's the treble 10 for double 16. Game shot. That's an 11 data. That's a really good timely response from Willie O'Connor as well. Just when we've seen those moments of magic from the finishing from Gary Anderson, an 11 data. Well, at least one treble here. He's got one. A second one would be a bonus. And Gary Anderson just doing what Gary Anderson does, getting himself in position with 130. O'Connor feeling the heat once again. Anderson breathing down his neck, needs the treble 17, can't find it. That would have left the bullseye. 53. And Anderson, having already taken out two tumblers checkouts, might well be looking at a third here for the match. Gets the treble to leave 70. That leaves the bullseye. And that is 25 away. O'Connor's heart will be racing here. It's Blackpool or bust for Willie O'Connor this week. It's a tall order, but he's got to take care of business here and now, 66. and he can't find double two. More missed darts at double for Willie O'Connor. They all seem to have come at just the wrong time for him. And Gary Anderson, well, here we go. We've had nine successive holes of throw in this match, and Gary Anderson in leg 10 nine. can't find one here either. Well, if you're going to miss, miss outside. Not that far away, Willie. No Ooh, three more opportunities have come and gone, and surely, 
surely now that is the last dart that Willie O'Connor throws elements. today Gary because Anderson. Gary Anderson has stepped in and after nine successive holes of throw, Gary Anderson almost inevitably stealing it. Does work as a bus driver in Cork. Those that Six travel months. on his bus would have been waiting patiently at the bus stop since <laughs> Thursday. 134. Yeah, I'm expecting a, a similar sort of match to, uh, to the one that they had last year. It's uh, 96. I don't think there'll be more than two legs between them. I've got to say it's um, uh, a difficult one to, to weigh up this. And I think Game shot. maybe, just maybe, I think Ritz will be looking at the rest of the field. And I think he wouldn't be human if he wasn't looking around and seeing what was going on elsewhere. But he needs to just stay focused on the here and now. 12 different winners from 12 so far, and I wouldn't back against a 13th maybe today. Ritz may be ready to turn this game around. This is the crucial leg, really. I think he's got six starts to break. 63. Smart thinking with the last start gets him below 100 and onto a two data. Yeah, that could be the difference. 58. These are the little advantages that he has to try and find. I mean, yeah, you're right. I mean, 4-1 does look a, a very sizable lead, doesn't Dead it, in shot. a first to six race with the break of throw. And with Ritz, when he has a visit like that, you're almost waiting to see if that's just going to infect the rest of his game and his attitude. The, the top, top players have learned to deal with them. I think a classic example of that is the world number one and world champion, Luke Humphrey. Yeah. Well, strayed with the third dart, but would it have been enough? I'm not sure. Shiganski, 105. Game yeah, shot. nicely finished off by Radic Shiganski. That's a lovely piece of play by the Polish player. And a some plus finish. Well, 208 plays 208 after nine darts apiece. Who will blink first in this one? Rids. 100. With a ton. What can do, or what can Shiganski do in reply here? A bit loose with his first 100. two. Good recovery with the third dart just to stay on terms with Rids in this one. couldn't take out the 108 and if Shiganski does then that will be over it is the pole who's run right in this one and that is that Radek Shiganski. Shiganski takes Cannon Rids apart shake of the head from Rids who maybe lost it in his mind early you can see the anger as he packs his darts away you won't want to leave it too late in the day tomorrow you won't want to leave too much to chance Aspinall not leaving a lot to chance himself for the maximum. Fantastic setup shot to leave 41 after nine darts. James Wade isn't going to respond in kind. But will leave himself something handy just in case the ass doesn't clean this up. Yeah, this is for a break of throw and a um, bit of early daylight for Nathan Aspinall to uh, work with uh, as well. That's the easy part of it. Game and shot. he's done the trickier pass as well with his first dart in hand. So Aspinall two to the good. Aspinall looking to put some pressure on here. James Wade on 65. We'll have to be careful of hitting the bullseye like Nathan's just done there when he comes 95. back. Yeah, Richie Edhouse did that in uh, the match I was watching earlier on as well against uh, Owen Bates. It was uh, too good from Edhouse on that occasion. Well, I tell you what, you would have rather have hit the bullseye than hit the single one. He meant he had to go for the ball at the end of the visit, and now Aspinall will be doing at least that. In fact, he'll be doing a little bit better than that. Game Double shot. 16 pinned. His finishing has been on point in this game. Wade making a move here, but he might not be able to do anything to prevent Aspinall winning the match. He can do it with the big one. Well, Wade will fancy this 83. And he will get the opportunity with this 83 as well. And once again, Aspinall 56. unable to find the treble. Wade the favourite to make it 5-3. And it will be the bullseye. 
game shot. And it was partially obscure, but he found his way through. Bang on the red button for James Wade, and 5-1 becomes 5-3. I don't think, actually, it would make too much of a difference, but it would be interesting to just see if there'd be a... I don't know, an upsurge in tempo from Wade or just a bit, a bit more animation. Because right now, I mean, things are going really well for him. He's slowly but surely just dragged himself back into this one. There's a real calmness and a real serenity about James Wade as well. He's in a really good position in this leg. He's almost got level on the averages. He was miles behind 14 points at one stage not so long ago. But that's leveled things up and the scoreboard might level up as well in a moment, especially if he carries on like this. Astonishing for double 14, James Wade with a 148 checkout. Absolute brilliance from the machine to level things up at five apiece. So six starts for Aspinall from here. That will be some comfort for him. Although he's gone into the treble seven with that one. So he needs to try and make amends here. 101, yeah, nicely tied it up there by Aspinall. Gets himself a two dark combination. Wade's going to do everything he can, but I remind you, a dart fell on the floor. If he found two trebles, he would have been going for the bull here for the match. Is it going to be a cruel, cruel exit after a fabulous comeback here, or does James Wade get another chance? Aspinall, two darts at tops to hold off. The immense pressure that he's been under. 40. And he's underneath the wire, and Wade's Blackpool hopes are still alive. Double top. A solid as Blackpool rock. James Wade is on the march towards the match play. Zia can't do anything with 166. Bunting would have hoped to have done better with 167. Fifty fun. That's what he wants, Get that's shot. what he gets. All square. Another one hundred. One hundred and thirty three. Game shot. Well utilised, and now Plazia takes charge of this contest. Fifty nine. Ninety nine. Good response from Plazia, who did, of course, play Stephen Bunting in the semi-finals of a European Tour event last year. Only lost it in a last leg decider. That was a German darts open in Jena. Christoph Ratajski took the title in the end, Bunting losing in the final. Bullseye. Oh, Game that is shot. sensational. Perfection from Plazia. Bull 25, bull. No margin for error, really, from this point. One hundred and forty. Small argument to have gone to the bullseye with the last start. One hundred. Would have left himself on 96. He's going to have to use all three darts here. He is going to get a go at that usually Game trusty shot. double 16, and it is trusty. The 101 cleaned up 
appreciated by Plazia to put out the bunting. 95. Again, big moments. He takes his time. Zipper water slows it down. Just gives Plazia time to to get a little stress, doesn't it? It'd be even more stressed if he looks at the dartboard now. 60, 69 left. Correct. One hundred and thirty-three. So, to win it, one dart. A brilliant performance, but one dart might be all he gets, and he does find tops. Wesley Plazier gets the win to go with the performance. Bunting battled back in a fantastic game of darts in which both players averaged more than 103. Double 16. Oh, what a steal that is. Well, that's what James Wade is known for. Fifty-eight. Rapri gets a chance to cancel out that break of throw. Big, big opportunity this. Three darts in hand. Couldn't be much closer. Can he hoist the machine by his own petard? 30. No, he can't. He missed darts for 3 nil. He's missed darts for 3-1. Three of them, in fact. And James Wade will return to his favourite double. Game shot. And once again, pile on the... This would be 120. a huge moment in the match. And it's another leg in which Cam Crabtree has darts at double. That counts for every leg in this game. 81. Hit the bolt at the end of a 1-2-6 combo in the last leg. In the previous two legs, he'd missed multiple darts at the outer ring. Game shot. This time... He bails himself out last start in hand and restores a two-leg lead. James Wade thought it was him. That's excellent positioning there from Cam Crabtree. Well, it's an outside chance, but it's a chance. 97. At the very least, it puts pressure on the 118. And that dart makes it more difficult. Has to guide it above it, can't it? Clatters into it. So Cam Crabtree here. 20-year-old London lad. Looking to move within one leg of winning a quarter-final contest against James Wade. And he is one away. A little wry smile on the face of James Wade, a shake of the head. The 128 Pro Tour players, and let's not try and kid ourselves on that they weren't in this tournament. We saw 95. 11 of the top 16 seeds got in the first couple of rounds, including Michael Smith, Luke Littler, and the rest. James Wade used to be the guy that mopped up when the other top dogs would depart. But his hopes of winning the event might be about to be extinguished here as young Cam Crabtree looks at 64. Looks at double eight. Game and nails and it. Cam Crabtree. To defeat you James like you Wade. You didn't play like you can. I was lucky. Well done. He's had a <laughs> very 
important day, James Wade. He's put himself firmly back in the picture for the world match play. In fact, he's in the provisional places and he's opened up a little bit of a gap in that race. But his day ends in the quarterfinals and Cam Crabtree is through to the semifinals of a professional PDC event for the first time in his fledgling career. So lightly to go and win a tournament. Yes, he's had semifinals before, but when you look at the competition, he's not running into a world number one or two, is he? He's running into, yes, a very, very strong player in Ross Smith. But if he gets through him, somebody else pretty much with the same stats as him. Absolutely. The only, only tour he's not qualifying for is the development tour. <laughs> That's because of his age. Why didn't I say that? You would have thought about it before me. Four Challenge Tour titles to his name, by the way, including two this year. And it wasn't even that long ago he didn't have any. He's getting better with age. He's like a 1982 Chateau Lafitte. Looking for the double. 74. Failing to find it. Was it going to be 15s for Ross? He does like that area of the board to approach. How much does he like double five? Game shot. An awful lot. Start of the day, ranked number 13 in the world. Even throws a dot. If you want to be a top player these days, you've got a master. Best of 11. Then, best of 13. Then you go to best of 15. But if you want to be top tier, you've got to be able to double that. Best of 31 is where it's at. Well, leg after leg, Bolton's put himself in decent positions here, but he hasn't got anything to show for it in this semi-final. And every time Ross Smith is there ready to pounce. Are we going to see that same old story repeated in this leg? Hey. Not this time. Bolton breaks. Wesley Plazier is almost there. He's 6-1 up on Cam Crabtree. And he's averaging over 102. Playing like a world master, isn't he? Well, you mentioned Andy Bolton winning back-to-back. -back. 5 of 57 in a bolt. He's not going to take it, so Bolton has an opportunity to get the impetus back. 82. <clears throat> Combination shots are part of his arsenal. This one isn't. 50. Double 16. A little bit of daylight. Game shot. Expertly pitched by Ross Smith. That is a seriously good dart for a couple of reasons. One, it wasn't easy. And secondly, he's had trouble on it. The fact that he backed himself he to hit it on that occasion, I applaud him. He could have easily cowled away from it and gone 14, double 18, or 10 for tops. But when he's been successful in his career, double 16 has been really good to him and has returned 140. to make him the favorite for this match once again. It's the strongest pool of players that the PDC has ever assembled. I mean, how many players are genuinely not here? 140. Michael Van Gerwen, and Luke Humphreys. It's not as if there's 20 players missing. It's Two or three? And this could be three beautifully pitched darts. That is the wrong side of the wire, and that could be the difference. Game shot. Bolton almost making the 147 clearance. At a fourth players' championship title. Sixty. That could be that. The way the game's gone, you'd expect Ross Smith to wrap it up. And he is going to get that opportunity. On well, double 16. 69. Not there yet, but he will come back. 
The amount of times he's missed that 32 bed just on the outside today. It's almost like he just needs to tweak his sights on double 16 just a little bit. 60. Just a little bit more will get him to the final. Well, that's about as far away as he's been from that target, but that's where he usually is. And Ross Smith finds himself in the final of Players' Championship 13. Maintain that and back it up in the, in the final itself against a man, as you say, looking for a fourth Players' Championship title and a man who, of course, was recently the European champion as well. 60. I'll go back to what I said about that undefeated streak for Plazier. Because when you've won 14 games in a row, there's a small part of you that thinks you may never lose again. 140. Realistically, you will. But while you're on that crest of a wave, you can just feel invincible. And, uh, you know, I mean, uh, we, we, we touched upon it earlier, didn't we, about the prize money as well for Plaisier. I mean, Game whatever he picks up as Ross Smith finds that uh, finish for good measure for the opener. But, yeah, um, Plaisier, I think, will be, you know, given a certain amount of comfort now from the fact that he's guaranteed £10,000. That is 60. significant. That's been in the venue over the last hour or so. What's next? Tell us, Ross. What is next? 177. No stranger to a nine dart finish, of course, is uh, Ross Smith. He's had a couple of high profile ones over the course of his career. One. And having started off with a 170 checkout, who knows where it might take him, Paul? It's not going to take him to a perfect leg, but this is a furnace like start. 66 from the man who I like to call the big deal. 96. He's big, he's from deal, he's a big deal. 140. Well, Wesley Plaisier hoping to be a big deal this weekend. I think irrespective of the outcome of this final, he is going to go down as one of the talking points of this week as we Game Countdown shot. to Blackpool, as he said, the narrative seems to have changed immeasurably, doesn't it, over the course of the day as the... Can you deliver, Ross? That is a perfect first start. And again, stay where you are. Thank you very much. Nine dart attempt for the third time in the final. I asked whether we could dare dream again because I just thought the way he threw that first 180, just it just lent itself to another, just that, just that flow that he had. And I thought if he could just step up again like that, why not? Here we go once more. Another opportunity for Ross Smith. This time, once again, it's not taken. And he's, he's got work to do as well, because Plaisier is on 145 here as well. So Smith needs something. And the last one he got was in the country of Wesley Plaisier. He got one in the Netherlands. And he's going to get a look at 56 to get beyond the halfway point. 65. The scoring is suffocating Big Wes. Plaisier's use of the 25 has been really effective when I've seen him today as well. That's the other talking point. But Ross Smith looking at tops Game and shot. now looking at a 5-1 lead in this final. He's yeah. playing with the leash off. Yeah, new lease of life. Just coming through that battle against Andy Bolton. Just coming through that needs-must, winning ugly environment that he obviously found himself in that semi-final. I caught the tail end of it. And yeah, I think it was one of those where he was just... Just about getting the job done, wasn't it, really? 125 there for good measure to leave 62. Plies here looking at 144. This is possible. This is guessable. And it certainly is now. And it certainly is now. Lifeline for Wesley Plies here. Game and shot. a 144 checkout takes him to 5-2. But significantly, column inches go to Humphreys. They go to Michael Smith in the last few days. They go to Littler. They go to other people as well. Tell me why Ross Smith cannot win everything he enters when he plays like this. This is the third time on his own in the final. He's been six perfect darts in. And will he make it pay this time? Because Plaisier is lurking on 167. Ross Smith looking at 141. It's not going to happen. Needs to stay with his eyes on the prize here. 101 away. So, yeah, decision time downstairs. 65. Every single department, world-class in this final. Doubles, maximums, scoring metrics, average the lot. But Plazier is looking at the bull to make this place shake. Oh, Game what was that? For heaven's sake, what else have they got in the locker? This is his sixth final.
He's already won three. He's been through the mill before. 92. But imagine if he hits him back with another 167. Hold on to your hats, everybody. Yeah, just imagine. Not quite the case. Little, yeah, little sigh of relief there from Wesley Plaisier. Just watching on behind Ross Smith. 36 plays 32. Plaisier on strike first. This to take us to six apiece. What a final. What a day so far it's been. Game shot. Still a little bit more to go because we are now effectively into a best of three situation, six apiece. He's left himself 170, <laughs> heaven forbid. You know what might be on the cards, don't you? I mean, Ross Smith here really will be just holding his breath and just hoping and praying. He's not trailed 99. in this final at all. He led from the word go. He's been pegged back to six apiece, having so nearly gone 6-1 up at one stage. But Wesley Plies here won't find the big fish, and Ross Smith will return looking at double 18. You can look now, Ross. I think there was a lot of us were watching that 170 attempt with one eye as if to say, surely not. Well, this one, surely. Game shot. There it is, 7-6. And Plazier now has to win the last two legs if he wants a PDC title at this level. Not too much riding on this particular visit. Got six darts from here, and it's just as well because he can't find the treble 20 with either of his first two darts anyway. Ooh, that's given Ross Smith a new lease of life as well. That's given him all sorts of encouragement. That changes things. Now Smith's thinking, I might just get six darts from 180 here. He's blocked that 60. He might have to try and find the top left corner. 60. He went for it and just missed it. So Plazier's effort here to take us to a last leg shootout is harder than it should have been. But never bat against Plazia. Double eight for 7-7. Seven, seven. Oh, it's incredible. It's immaculate. And we're going to leg 15. Well, Plazia, a 180. Nothing less will do here, really. And he might well get it, you know. Well, Whoa, that's going to ask one or two questions of Ross Smith, certainly. He's just got to be careful here. 62 left. Title number four in players' championships. Beckons. He leaves 90. 32, which has been a bit of a thorn in his side at times over the last few matches, but it could be a tournament winning shot. Shame about the first start there from Wesley Plaisier, but my goodness me, he really tied it up well. He's he's given himself an outside chance, but Ross Smith looking at double 16 for the title for a fourth Pro Tour title of his career. Now looking at double eight. 16. And the champagne, if there is to be any, remains on ice. We go from Ross Smith trying to win the tournament to Wesley Plazier trying to get a match opportunity at tops. He's going to get one. 73. No match starts until leg 15, and now they've both had them. Ross Smith with that shake of the head. He could not believe the situation that he found himself in. Plaisier cannot believe that he's missed his one and only, potentially one and only opportunity. Ross Smith returning, having missed three match darts, made that four. But Game no shot. mistake with the and fifth the match, match dart in his hand for Ross Smith, who does wrap up a fourth Pro Tour title. 